so he can take us from the life of prison, whether it be physical, whether it be health, whether it be financial, whether it be emotional, whether it be spiritual, whatever it is, he can take it and take it from prison to praise. And if we ever find ourselves where we feel like we are imprisoned, he'll bring the praise to us. Paul praised the Lord in prison and the walls fell down. From prison to praise. From prison to praise. This book's been on my bookshelf for many a year and it's about a guy who as a young person found himself behind bars. But in bars, behind bars, in prison, he came to faith in Jesus and he later became a defence force or army chaplain over in America helping people to know freedom in Christ. Prison to praise, name of the book, but that's what we're talking about today too, from a life in prison to a life in praise because a life in prison doesn't have to be behind bars or in a jail cell. There's many different prisons we can live in, from prison to praise. And as we think about this theme, we're going to look at the scriptures and think about these four points. The example of David, uh, the grace of God through Jesus, the encouragement of Paul and the help of the Holy Spirit. What are they? The example of David, the grace of God through Jesus, the encouragement of Paul and the help, praise the Lord, <laughs> of the Holy Spirit. So last week we still had kids in church when we were talking about the readings we thought oh you know having David seduce Bathsheba in the um, Old Testament reading may not be the best reading to have read out while the kids are here without explaining it in great detail. And you know it, it would be easier maybe to say oh look that's too difficult you know, let's park that to the side and let's just do something that's more no, you know, nice, warm and fuzzy because we don't want to upset each other. We don't want to deal with the reality of the broken world. So let's just do something that's cute, you know, something that we don't have to get awkward about and tread on eggshells. Well, isn't it good that that's in the Bible? If I wrote the Bible, I might have said, oh, I'm not going to include that, that's too ugly, <laughs> you know. But the great thing about the Bible, it deals with the ugly. And that's so good because what? Because we have to deal with the ugly of life, don't we? And so much better that we have these examples and, and these helps that rather than only thinking that being a Christian is about froth and bubble, we get to a deeper level of reality because God deals with the deep, the depth of reality. So what happens? We heard the story last week. We touched on it this week. God brings along Nathan. Nathan means he will give. Given by God. <laughs> we don't always like the voice of the prophet. Often in the Old Testament, the prophets brought bad news and the kings didn't want to hear it. But if they had to listen to it, they might have made better decisions. But... We all need a Nathan in our life at some times. Maybe sometimes we might be the Nathan because we need to have God's messengers around us. Nathan was God's messenger for David at the time. He was sent by God to come along and help him out. So the Lord sent Nathan, the prophet, to tell David, God's person, God's got a messenger in Nathan bringing a message to God's person at the time who was David. He needed to hear what God needed him to hear at the time, which was the story that would unfold. A parable. Well, we know Jesus always used parables, stories to communicate God's truth, God's message that he needed to hear at the time. And we know the story, we heard it read, what happens as he hears his story, he's outraged and he's distressed. And then the penny drops when he realises that, hold on, 
I'm the one in the story. Difficult message to communicate for Nathan. Whew. But it's the message that God needed David to hear. And out of that, he comes to a place of understanding. We all need that, don't we? We all need a Nathan or we need people to help us to be checked. There's nothing in a way more dangerous to be unchecked, to be unaware of what we're doing. You know, I look back at my old life and there were things that I was doing, I was blissfully unaware of what chaos I was bringing to my own life and other people's because I didn't have a Nathan in my life. Or if there was a Nathan in my life, I wasn't listening to them. But when we have a Nathan and we hear God's word through God's messenger and we take it on board, there's a reality check that we all need. One old saying, you can take it or leave it, is, you know, if I'm ever doing this, and I've said this to people on the way, you know, having had other beautiful friends of mine fall, I said, if you ever see me doing that, get a bit of 4B2 and what? <laughs> Hit me around the head. Not um, literally, figuratively, help me to be self-aware. Help me to be woken up to what I'm doing that's wrong. This is that moment for David. And from that, uh, we see much healing and restoration take place. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. That's the heart cry of David. And we hear it in this beautiful psalm, Psalm 51, an awesome psalm. If you don't know it, get familiar with it because it's a really helpful psalm as we take the journey through life. It begins with him acknowledging who God is, which is the first thing to realise, well, I'm not God, I don't know at all, I need one better than myself, and that one is God. And then in acknowledging who God is, acknowledging, well, I'm a fallen creature and I, I can't do it alone, I need help, and God's the one who can give that help. And I need to seek God's truth, God's grace, mercy, forgiveness, love and compassion. And when I come to that place of repentance, God brings restoration. God soothes. God calms. God restores peace. God's grace is poured over us. And again, we could stay there. Isn't that awesome? But there's one little part that's captured in the story and it's part we don't often talk about in the church but it's a very important part. The consequence. The consequence. David knew God's love, mercy and forgiveness but there was a consequence for his fallenness. There's a consequence for Moses' fallenness. And sometimes there's a consequence for our fallenness as well. If you've ever been involved with people who have done time behind bars, just like the fellow who wrote the book, Merlin Carruthers, they might come to know Jesus and know his love, mercy and compassion and freedom behind bars, but they still have to serve out the sentence. If they've been put in jail for five years and they've only come to know Jesus in year two, they'll still have to serve out the rest of their sentence. And for David, he still lived. There was consequences that are described in the passage, but he had to still live with the brokenness of what had happened. And we sometimes still have to live with the consequences of the things we've done, you know. I haven't done always good things in the past and I'm ashamed of that. I've been healed of it and forgiven of it, but it might be that someone who I've heard in the past still thinks I'm a pretty low-life sort of person. <laughs> that doesn't bring me joy. It's a consequence, though. But the awesome thing is we still can know freedom with that. I know at least one person on the planet, probably a lot more who I don't know, who probably doesn't think I'm a nice person and I've done a horrible thing to them and I acknowledge that and I know that. But that doesn't control who I am today. 
because God's grace and mercy overcomes those things. In Isaiah, the prophet says, freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. God is a God of mercy. God is a God who knows we live in a broken world and he brings his grace to us, to all of creation, the Jesus factor. (laughs) In our scripture today, Jesus said to them, they wanted to do the works of God, they wanted to see miraculous signs and all these things, hoo-ha, bells and whistles. And Jesus said, well, if you want to do the works of God, this is what it is, listen to it, listen to it, listen to it. Believe in the one God has sent. Believe in me. God's messenger for God's person or God's people with God's message. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. God's grace, God's love, his abundance is poured out and given to us. So David's example, God's grace delivered in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus and um, the example of Paul, because Paul was in prison but he wasn't in prison for something he'd done wrong, he was in prison because people didn't like what he was saying which was the good news of Jesus. So imagine that because sometimes we can be in prison, whether it's behind bars or in prison in other ways, because of nothing we've done, because someone else has done something to imprison us. And it's so amazing how God uses this. Look at how many letters Paul wrote. Most of the New Testament is from Paul. And most of it, a lot of it's written about when he was written, it was written when he was what? In prison. God used that time productively. God's messenger for God's people and God's message. From today's New Testament reading, the epistle, the letter, Paul writes, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you, God's people, to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. That's a bit tough sometimes, isn't it? Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you've been called to one glorious hope for the future. It's an awesome encouragement for us the church Paul's encouragement God's messenger God's people God's message and how cool is this God's spirit Jesus said I will send to you the paraclete the spirit of truth He will come to you from the Father and will testify all about me. The paraclete, the parakletos, the Greek word for helper, comforter, encourager, counsellor. Put your hand up if you don't ever need help. Put your hand up if you never need comfort. Put your hand up if you never need to be encouraged or counselled. I'm grateful and proud and, and pleased that no one put their hand up because we all need that help, don't we? We all need that help. David need that help. Paul need that help. We all need that help. As we seek God's cleansing and healing, we need the word of God and the spirit of God to help us through. So we have the psalm of repentance from David that we can acknowledge God, that we can acknowledge our fallenness, our brokenness, but we can seek God's truth and restoration, his grace and forgiveness, and he will restore us. So he can take us from the life of prison, whether it be physical, whether it be health, whether it be financial, 
whether it be emotional, whether it be spiritual, whatever it is, he can take it and take it from prison to praise. And if we ever find ourselves where we feel like we are imprisoned, he'll bring the praise to us. Paul praised the Lord in prison and the walls fell down. From prison to praise. At the foyer, in the foyer on the table, there's some of these sheets. It's called Breaking Up the Fellow Ground. It's not my work. It was um, an outline for repentance by Charles G. Finney. Some of you would know of him. And edited and paraphrased by Keith and Melody Green. You might even know of them back in the day, back in the 70s, I think. And this is a wonderful little help that may be of help for you to read through over time. It doesn't have to be done in one hour. Best not to be done in one hour. If you do it in one hour, you're doing a lot better than I would be. But it's a great exercise to go through and look back over your life. That's why it takes more than one hour. Go back over your life and take time to pray, to wait on God and look at the different aspects of our life, which is outlined there. And it helps us to acknowledge and be reminded of those things that might be a bit yucky in our lives, but to bring them to God, as David brought them to God, and say, God, this was terrible. This is something I did that was terrible. Lord, forgive me. Oh Lord, I pray not only will you forgive me, but the person who I hurt by word or action or deed will also forgive me. Or it might be a case of, Lord, what that person did to me really hurt me and I'm still carrying that, that, that hurt with me today. Lord, I'm not ready to forgive them, but can you help and can you forgive them? And can you in time help me to forgive them? I'll never forget it but I don't want it to have power over my life anymore. I will live with a memory, but I won't live with the pain that overwhelms me and cripples me. It's a helpful exercise. You may find it helpful. And um, if you find anything from today ooh, a bit too hard to, to live with, that's fine. Help is here. God's spirit's here. God's word's here. And if you need to have a yak to someone through the week, Give us a call, one of the ministry team, and we'd be very happy to have a cuppa with you and talk and pray through these things. These things are brought up not to make us captive, but that we might be set free, that we might go from perhaps having some experience of being imprisoned when God wants us to be in a place of praise. So let us pray. Lord, um, at least I want to personally thank you that you don't just deal with the easy things in life, but Lord, you deal with the deepest things in life, sometimes even our deepest hurts and pains. And Lord, I thank you that you can do heart surgery on us even more greatly than the finest heart surgeon. You can bring your spirit's healing to our mind, to our heart, to the depth of our being. I pray, Lord, for us gathered and those who are watching online that your spirit might flow into us at this time, making us aware perhaps of things that we aren't even aware of. But too, for those things we are conscious of, Lord, we pray for healing and restoration. Help us to forgive those who have hurt us. And Lord, if we can't do that, we pray you'll forgive them and over time help us to come to that place where we might be able to forgive them. That we will no longer be captive uh, to what hurt we've endured. And Lord, we might also be recollecting too at this time that we have hurt someone and we are conscious of it. We pray you'll forgive us of that, Lord, and they might forgive us. 
Lord, if it's right, we might seek to communicate that to them, if it's possible, if it's right. And Lord, help us to, lead, to be made aware of times and circumstances where we have hurt someone and we aren't aware of it. We pray that you'll bring the message of your word and your spirit either directly or through a brother or sister in Christ that we might be aware that we can turn to you for the seeking of truth, the creating of a new heart and a right spirit within us. But Father, most of all, we thank you that you are a God of mercy, a God of love and grace. Help us not to sit in the ashes wallowing, but Lord, rather, help us to step out to them and put on the garments of praise. For you are a mighty God and you love and care for each one of us. In Jesus' name.